Hi guys, we're Punctual and we are at Point Blank Music School. We're going to show you how we've done our remix for Ray. Yeah, Ray and Natalie Don't, which is, uh, I think, probably our favourite remix we've ever done. Probably. And it's the one that Don't we get... Don't want to slate any other ones we've done, though. Yeah, it's the one we get asked most questions about, sort of how we made it, so we thought it would be a good one to sort of go through. We're just signed to Polydor, which is the same label as Ray, so it's kind of the first remix they had asked us to do. And so we actually did two remixes of the same song and sent them both options. We love Ray. We've like loved her for years in terms of like the music she makes, and so we're like, I have to get this remix. So we did two just in case they didn't like one. Mm -hmm. They liked this one the most. And so here we are. Hedge your bets. <laughs> yeah, hedge your bets. So that's a good top tip. So yeah, that's how it sort of came about, which is cool. And then Ray loved it. We kind of have worked with her since, and she actually said how much she loved it, which is always great to hear. Mm -hmm. so you don't often, you don't always hear from the actual artists themselves when you do remixes. When we usually do v v remixes, we try and we try and incorporate quite a lot of the stems, but the main thing is just get the vocals, and we like to kind of re-harmonize it and sort of put our new chords underneath to sort of, I guess, give it our own stamp. Mm. But the problem with this song, and I mean, it's an amazing original song, <laughs> nothing, but, but, but uh, it's, it was very, very tied into the chord progression. So like, you know, say the, say the lead vocal here. Do it, no, no, don't do it, Natalie, don't, don't. Oh no, there she goes, to take him from my... It just goes to weird notes and sort of the key modulates a bit and it's just very difficult to write new chords around. It's what we ended up doing. We took the this sort of main hook and made a little loop out of it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it, Whole remix is built up about, between the normal pitch of the vocals and also the vocals seven semitones down. But it all sort of lands in the same key in the end. Mm -hmm. but I, I remember talking to you about the sort of the vocal arrangement on you know WhatsApp and, and things around around this time. Yeah. I think especially for a dance track, it's cool to have that repetition early on. You know, we were kind of at, like wondering if it was good to start with a verse and then, you know, the pre-chorus and do that kind of thing. But I think... And on the drop, actually, it's probably worth saying, the only vocals you can really hear are the BVs, which are really, really wide, which again sort of helps, I think. Yeah. But the good trick that is sort of make tracks more mono before the drop. Mm. And then on the drop, suddenly make everything wide because it sort of makes it all very exciting all of a sudden. Yeah. Everything sounds nicer in stereo. So if you can try and get things as mono as possible before and build ups, etc., it helps. I think Sagala said that once in a tutorial. So yeah, yeah. So there we go. Props to old oh, Bruce. <laughs> One of the main components of this beat is called chilled Liam drums, which sounds like basically that. Actually, that's something we made. We had a session with Liam Payne and spent a long time trying to make very nice drums because when you do sort of a writing session with somebody from One Direction, you don't, well, you want them to think you're a good, good producer. So I spent ages making yeah, this sort of like... five minutes, mate. <laughs> yeah, making this drum loop. Which now we use a, a lot as, as a layer, just as just a nice soft drum layer. Something, something I do a lot is like, if there's a beat or a sort of a top layer from a track, that, another track that we've used, just honestly, just bounce out that little top layer and use it again. So literally done that again here on these which I just think has sort of a nice sort of like kind of sizzly layer kind of nice clap to it a, a lot of the time with drums sort of get them to a sort of okay level and then we'll you'll make them actually sound nice these are the drop drums the kick is a big Z shouts to him uh, big Z's like a does YouTube tutorials and stuff. He also does sample packs, and he's honestly really. He's basically the man. He's like, really if, great. He's I think I, I think he's quite slept on. Honestly, you should check him out. Yeah, and then a bit of Mark Knight sort of perk. Just... Can't go wrong with a bit of Mark Knight, especially for percussions. Uh, so he's great, man. Honestly, I wouldn't say this track's got the most sort of wild drums ever, but it's sort of slightly softer than you'd imagine. On the bass, a lot of people always say never put reverb on bass, which is probably a fairly good rule. But on this, that is actually a bass with full reverb. 
which I don't think you're meant to do, but it sort of works out. There's a bit of decapitator which comes on later on that. If you make a nice sound or find a nice preset or whatever on, a, on another track, always just save all your presets because then you sort of have them all ready to go. And it also means you sort of build up a sonic and sort of build a bit of an identity if you're sort of using similar sounds and tweaking the same kind of sounds. So that sound, it, it's just like vengeance, deep house, bass sounds. Honestly, it's uh, you, it's actually really, really decent. And then you've got this lead. It sounds sonically the same and sort of will often blend with the actual sound. Yeah. And then there's a bit of automation on this, which brings a decapitator in, which is great. And then my favorite sound of this track. It's like one of the first things I worked on in the studio. Mm. And I remember sort of sitting there listening to it, especially when like this part. And thinking either I'm just really excited because we're in a like a nice studio now, or this is awful. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't quite work out. But anyway, it turned out to be my favorite thing. So this just on Diva, which is great plugin. I mean, it's just I think for soft synths, it's the best one, especially for leads like for this. For leads, it just like straight out of the box. So this is actually made up from the Albert Hall Mini lead and then automate, I think, the decay on this section here. Got a quite nice plugin called Gullfoss, which sort of, I'd say, sort of tames the sound. It's a bit like Soothe, but it's sort of nicer to use on synths. I'm gonna take everything off. Kind of sits nice. Yeah, it just kind of. As I say, I, I mean, generally, I don't put too much stuff on because I know the more I process, the less you'll be able to process, and you're better at. <laughs> mixing them is hard to kind of... So yeah, I suppose it's hard to go back if you compress the hell out of something. Exactly, you know, yeah. On, it sort of gives you more control. Having said that, you know, things like Goldfoss are just like, you can probably put that a little bit on every channel. It would kill the computer because it's an extremely high yeah. CPU plugin. Yeah. A massive sucker for like string arrangements and that kind of thing. So whenever there's a chance to do them, I'll try and get one in and make it sound really subtle, emotional. Subtle, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when you spent like three hundred pounds, not to discredit play East West, East yeah. West, yeah, on, but on the East West Symphonic Orchestra. Uh, yeah, if you're actually doing a proper string arrangement, it's nice to have two different sets of string plugins, unless you're obviously recording them. But you know, no, we're not all sort of millionaires. So like, mm. if you, uh, it's nice to have a kind of combination of two different ones so it makes it sound a bit more real, I think. Another good trick is if you do have a bit of money, which, you know, not everyone does, but if you track out the, an entire string arrangement on, you know, a VST or a couple of VSTs, and then just get one sort of violinist to record the lead line. Nobody can tell, tell the difference because you just focus on the sort of the main string line. That's about it in terms of the sounds. I hope that's been sort of instructive. And we'll jump over to Will's laptop where we mixed it and actually made it sound nice. Cool. So yeah, we just jumped into Cubase now, and we're going to look at the mix down where we kind of just like finished it up. Starting with drums uh, is the best idea with mixing because that is the the foundation for everything. Especially with dance records. Yeah, if your drums don't sound good at the beginning, you're going to just run into problems further down the line because everything else is just going to be sitting on top of that. So if your kick drum isn't, you know, hasn't got enough weight in it, you might not add enough weight in the bass. Yeah. Or if your, for example, your clap isn't loud enough, which is another classic thing, you're not going to have your synths as loud because you don't, you know. Yeah, you always do leveling afterwards. You know, when everything's in, you'll all, always sort of do slight level tweaks anyway, but getting the actual drums sounding nice on their own is quite important. Some people do say that starting with drums can fatigue your ears quite badly. So there, there are sort of arguments either way, but I think it's about what you're comfortable with and what works best for you. But we we always, yeah, start with drums. We can play from the chorus. So we then put a bit of compression. I don't know, I think that probably just added a bit of attack to it. A great thing with Pro-Q is that you can actually click this little A, regardless of what processing you do, 
for example, you do that. Or, oh. <laughs> it will actually turn it. It turns it down. So like whatever you're listening to, ah, it volume matches because obviously you know when you're EQing, sometimes you want to just add more bass or mm. like it actually turns the volume down as you boost up. Does it is, do the inverse? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. It does. So, you. great plugin. So okay. this was just, I think, removing some of the sort of like something you didn't need there, and maybe it's a bit too much attack. Mm. This is actually another free plugin. Yeah, it sounds a bit extreme. Kind of gives it a bit of distortion. Yeah. So yeah, we've got kick drum, and then clap, the intro, automated. This out, which this is basically the snare hitting at about two seventeen. Small tricks like that. It's the same with the widening thing. It's sort of just you want to take out from before the drop, essentially. And then we just got your hats. Just some basic sort of leveling going on. Offbeat shakers, which are these. Yeah. Again, decapitate. It's just it's just a little bit on. It's one of those things you can put a little bit on most things. I think the first thing to do when you're mixing is just to make sure that you don't have any frequencies that you don't need. So it might have been a build up of reverb or, or something on it, giving you this resonant peak at you know two K, which is also a very sensitive frequency for your mm. ears. So if we listen without that, you listen to that like, yeah, you sort of need to judge, I think, um, what you actually need from mm. each sound sometimes, because if you have fifteen different sounds going at once and they all have different resonant frequencies, it builds up and it makes the whole mix really sort of muddy, and you need to work out. What is the purpose of that ride? Well, the purpose mm. of that ride is to give the drums some more tops, and the that's to give it energy. And you don't need that sort of three k or whatever it was. There's nothing crazy going on with these drums. They they sound grateful and just making them a little bit brighter at times, and just making sure like the kick and claps are really popping through. At this point, I think the next thing would have been to add a bit of master bus processing. People do this differently, but I think it's just good practice just to add a little bit of compression so that you're listening to like near the end. Product. We just play the bass and the drums together. These things are subtle, but it does. They all make a difference, really, at the end of the day. Yeah, it makes a groove a bit. So yeah, we got a bit of that bus compressor on, a bit of tape just to tame the highs a little bit. When I Bounce stems, especially when they send them to you, generally take all the side chain off the bass. Most things leave the side chain on because I think it's, it's sort of more important in terms of stylistically and stuff. But with bass, it's better to sort of process it, especially when you're mixing without side chain because you can compress it before side chain, etc. Yeah, if you if you compress after side chain, you're only going to be like getting a portion of that. It's it's, it's going to be triggering the compression. With the one K range in the, in bass is always going to be what you hear on small speakers. We're in the world of TikTok and all that kind of thing now where everyone's just listening on their phones. And you know, there's something to take into account when you're making any type of music, including dance music, you know. As much as the bass is so fundamental in most listening conditions, actually, the, the top end of things and mid-range is much more important on most things like earpods and your phones and little speakers and your Alexa, for example. So, <laughs> but and then some of these peaks, which you can kind of see, like, I think the decapitator would have just been taming some of them. Yeah, quite subtle. Whoa, <laughs> this looks fun. <laughs> okay, so what we've done here is to actually taken all of the stereo signal out of the, just because you don't need that. You sort of always want your low end to be fairly mono, you know, par partially for clubs and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just, you're wasting space, really. And then just a little bit of just safety limiting again, just you want your bass to be nice and round. So, just a couple of dBs there, and then kickstart on, and I think that's mostly, that's, mo that's like the main bass sound. And then we've got a sub, which is doing the same thing, just to capitate a, a bit more on that, and then rolling off the tops. And there's a limiter again at the end, just, um, just to sort of touch it. Yeah, top. let's just make your sub both mono and consistent. <laughs> and yeah, it'll sound good in the club. You yeah. Know? It's Otherwise, kind of it's going to be like, whoa, yeah, it will not hit in the same way. So at this point, we're kind of, kind of rolling at this point.
like a sort of 1176 style. Yeah, it just brings that to the forefront. These are the little, these are the fun the sounds. The donks. Those are the ones. So on this, I actually did use a plugin by UAD, finally. But this is one of the plugins I was saying that I want to play around with. It's a, yeah, it's a tube preamp. So you can add a bit of sort of color to sounds. Just turn the gain up a little bit. It's quite subtle. Cool. So yeah, anyway, that's drums and bass. This is kind of the, probably the main sound in it, really, just harmonizing the bass. Again, a bit of 1176. Again, it's a little bit of color, but add also sort of um, taming transients just to bring stuff forward. OTT, classic. It just makes things brighter, basically. And then taking some muddiness out, probably with dynamic EQ. Lots of little changes make the overall picture just more clear. You don't want to be doing crazy things because it sounded good before. You want to just slightly enhancing everything. Oh yes, yeah, so we've got some automation for volumes and things, but this plugin is free. It's very similar to the Wave sort of um, widening plugin, and you can just mm -hmm. remove some of the side signal in build up like this, and then when it gets to the drop, it's basically wider than when it started, which is just, it just yeah. feels like uh, the sound's getting bigger. If we listen to the difference here, if we do this. Yeah. It's just, it's just a really easy way to make things sound bigger without having to make it sound bigger. You take away to begin with and then... Yeah, it it's a good, I mean, it's a good trick, especially with mixing and, and production. I mean, if you want your drop to sound bigger, you don't always necessarily have to add more to your drop take away from what mm. before, and that could be in terms of taking away rises and taking away sort of, you know, drum builds or anything mm -hmm. like that, or taking away stereo width or taking away bass and, and stuff. Mm. If your drop isn't sounding big enough, it might be because your build up's too big. Exactly. Not because exactly. your drop isn't big enough. And it's just a letdown. <laughs> exactly. No one wants a letdown, especially in a club. <laughs> Effect. Oh, we've added a delay to, to a laser sound here. Yeah. That's just a cashmere laser. I mean, ca cashmere samples, especially for um, effects and stuff, is just like our go to, I think. They all sort of do different things and, you know. Just briefly touching on the vocals. Again, didn't really need to do much because obviously the vocals are processed really nicely, but. Just it's a little bit of multi pound on all of it. Just to glue like her delays and reverbs with the lead. Yeah, and I guess because we're using different, you know, one of them is pitched down seven and one of them is the usual pitch, it's kind of good to sort of glue them together a little bit, especially as they're mm -hmm. sort of, you know, chatting to each other in a way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then a bit of DSing, decapitator. Honestly, even on vocals. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> crazy. An advert for decapitator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. All those sound toys fucking so great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's quite a late addition, I think, putting that in. <laughs> That's sick. I love that. <laughs> Most vocals, if they are wide, if it's like a focus, I think it's just good practice to bring them into the middle if you've got other stuff going on because things you hear which are central are just easier to recognize on small speakers, got a bit of DSing. A lot of things are trial and error, so you, wanna, you don't have to stick with it if you don't want to. Cool, just got some ambient vocal-y things in a group. You lay it together. Yeah, I think that kind of thing, um, just having a little sort of ambient sound in the background really adds to this sort of um, the atmosphere of the track. Like it's sort of, I think it's important to, if you can, just layer things just quietly in the background of the tracks to sort of give it more it's like of a, a vibe, sort of isn't immersive it? feel. Yeah, you know, you want things to be able to pay attention to on your sort of third listen, fourth listen. Also kind of... Um quiet sounds, they'll almost sound further away, which gives you a sort of perception of depth. So yeah. those little things which you hear in the background, they almost, you imagine that like the far wall of wherever you're listening in this imaginary world is over there. So then the stuff that sounds close sounds closer. If everything is here, the room can only sound so big. So I think like that having yeah. some dynamic range, I think is quite important. I wouldn't be afraid to just throw so loads of different ideas and loads of different sounds down. And you can always take out afterwards, but it's just kind of, I, th I think it's just more fun to just make loads of things and then decide what sort of gets cut and what doesn't. But yeah, that's not the most complicated mix, mix down in the world. Obviously, you know, things are at different levels. You can kind of see on the mixer. 
So yeah, final little thing, which is just an easy way just to make your tracks feel more energetic. And it sounds almost silly even mentioning it, but it's just to do rides on things. So like automating the volume down before a drop. So maybe from the breakdown or from a pre you know, previous section. And this is the volume of the whole track? Yeah, yeah, just on that sort of stereo out. If the drop feels bigger. And, and pair that with like a high pass, which we're doing here. It's funny, when we, when we DJ stuff, it's something we do a lot, bring a track up on the filter and take all, all the low end out of the track for the drop, and now we just kind of just transported that idea over into our tracks. I think mm. it's something that lots of people do, but like, it just makes a big difference, I think, when you're sort of listening on, you know. If you're doing it in the club, you'd also be doing the reverb, which yeah. is what we've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Re reverb up, just make things a little, bit, a little more washy, so when the drop comes in, it all snaps in. One of the first people to really ever do that that I knew was Disclosure, actually. Like in oh, their yeah. really early stuff, they do that classic thing with like pads and stuff, and then it all high passes out and they build up the reverb and then just dropping it down to dry, tight, you know, mm. bassy stuff. Just gives that wow factor, which I think are after. Yeah. There's actually a really good plugin called Endless Smile, which is a dad life plugin, which is just brilliant. And that does basically these two things. All three things for Will's you. a big fan of that uh, endless smile. I'm less of a fan of it, if I'm as far as being honest. Harsh. I just don't, don't love it. For, it's for a quick, quick fix, quick. it's um, yeah. For a quick fix, it's great in a session or you know if you're writing something on the day and you're like, oh, this is exciting. What about yeah. sausage fat now? What oh, about yeah. sausage fat now? Yeah, use that sometimes. That's, that is good. To be fair, <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, I besides, know, I think that's basically our process and how we sort of make these tracks. And there's a lot of sending ideas back and forth to till you get to a place that mm. you know, we're both happy. Yeah. I think if we're doing this now, this would have to have an OTT on the master. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not, when you, not on before there? you send the pre-master. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, so that's basically that's basically it, I'd say. I think we've rambled a little bit. Yeah, but you know, yeah. producing is a bit like rambling. Anyway. It is. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks so much for having us, guys. We're punctual, and you can check out our stuff online on sort of Instagram, Spotify, TikTok if you really like. Although we're Deezer. Sort of Na Deep. Napster, <laughs> yeah, all Napster. of them. Yeah, but yeah, it's been lots of fun sort of breaking this track down. If you want more content like this, follow us on Instagram or follow Point Blank or follow both of us. Oh, the, the, <laughs> best, be the best sweet. scenario. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cheers. Thanks so much, guys. Mm -hmm.